Tonight, Victoria eases its lockdown restrictions. Regional Victoria returns to stage two, while Melbourne continues to record less cases every day, with the 14-day average now under 50. Plus, term three has finished up, but it's still unclear exactly what term four will look like for Melbourne students. Level the details on remote learning. Also tonight, the Queensland Chief Health Officer placed under police protection after she received death threats over her stance on border exemptions into the state. And two Hawthorne Premiership stars, Ben Stratton and Paul Piopolo, announced their retirement from the AFL. Six News starts now. Good evening, Regional Victoria has taken a massive step out of lockdown, returning to stage two restrictions after several days of low coronavirus numbers. Victoria Police and the military have now increased presence at border checkpoint patrols, with the Premier warning that anyone who tries getting across will be met with heavy fines. Lincoln Holmes begins our coverage. Just this week, the news many regional Victorians had been hoping for. I am absolutely delighted to be able to announce that Regional Victoria from 11.59pm tomorrow night will be able to take the third step. The easing of their coronavirus restrictions. Instead of stage three, they're now at step three. It's a, it's a massive thing. It is such good news. Uh, I am so, so pleased. There has only been one mystery case of coronavirus across the entirety of Regional Victoria in the past 14 days. What we don't want is a situation where test numbers uh, are not, a, not an accurate measure of not enough tests being done for us to have confidence that we've got a really clear picture of how much virus is out there. Footpaths outside bars and cafes may soon even be turned into eating strips so that cafes and bars can fit more people. We don't want any steps in this safe and steady roadmap to be deferred or to be in any way compromised. The Victorian Premier has said that residents in Melbourne's metropolitan zone, if they continue to follow restrictions, they could soon find themselves with these newfound freedoms the regional Victoria now has. Term 3 has officially finished up in Victoria, but it's still unclear what Term 4 will look like. As part of the easing of restrictions, regional Victorian students will now be allowed to return to in-person learning with heavy restrictions. But in Melbourne, it's expected that nearly all students will keep learning online. It's understood that students in prep to year 2, those in specialist schools and those doing VCEs and VCALs will eventually be allowed to return to in-person learning by the end of the term. However, sources tell Six News that all other students are likely, are, are likely rather to remain at home with remote learning, perhaps for the entire term. Victoria's Chief Commissioner has questioned why the AFP were not used in helping guard return travellers in hotel quarantine. Graham Ashton, who retired from the top job earlier this year, told the Coronavirus Hotel Quarantine Inquiry he initially assumed the Australian Federal Police would oversee the program because he understood immigration to be a matter for the Commonwealth. Victorian Liberal Opposition Leader Michael O'Brien has said Daniel Andrews needs to come out and explain why he lied to Parliament when asked about the state's failed coronavirus hotel quarantine scheme. The Premier was over the top in his restrictions that should never have been in place in the first place, particularly in regional Victoria. There are parts of country Victoria that have never had a single case of coronavirus, ever. It was unnecessarily damaging businesses, unnecessarily costing jobs, and unnecessarily causing a lot of pain and heartache for families. So uh, people shouldn't be grateful for Daniel, to Daniel Andrews for uh, easing restrictions that, that really shouldn't have been there in the first place. If you have restrictions, you target them. Target them to places like perhaps Colac, where we did have outbreaks. Mr O'Brien has also said that the Premier has acted illegally in enforcing a curfew that wasn't recommended from the state's Chief Health Officer, Brett Sutton. New South Wales Premier Gladys Berejiklian has confirmed that large stadiums and venues in the state will soon be allowed to have up to 50% capacity for one-off events. 
This means that people will be required to wear masks when moving in and out of the venue, but not while they are seated. As part of their COVID safe plan, stadiums have set out checkboard seating plans, according to the state's chief health officer. Those who live together will soon be allowed to sit together and sports fans will be, sports fans rather will be seated in small groups. This all means that Bankwest Stadium will be allowed to have 15,000 people. The SCG can have up to 23,000 and ANZ Stadium, which is the likely host of this year's NRL Grand Final, can have up to 40,000 people. Queensland Premier Anastasia Palaszczuk has said that she's prepared to lose the state's upcoming election rather than bow to pressure to reopen the state's border. Ms Palaszczuk did however indicate that Queensland was open to adding more spaces in hotel quarantine for overseas travellers. The only people being political here is Scott Morrison and Deb Frecklington. Now, if it means I have to lose the election, I will risk all that if it means keeping Queenslanders safe. I will always stand up for what I believe to be right in this state. Um, I'm putting myself out there, I'm putting myself on the line, but I'm making no apologies for keeping Queenslanders safe during this time. That's what they tell me, they stop me in the street, people stop me and tell me that they want us to keep going with what we're doing. This comes after it was revealed that the state's chief health officer, Dr Jeanette Young, was placed under police protection after receiving death threats over her stance on border exemptions. The World Health Organization has reported a record daily spike in coronavirus cases right across the globe. Anti-government protests in Israel have erupted after the country became the first nation to return to a full lockdown. Experts say the Israeli government failed to improve its contact tracing and also failed to educate communities and a high risk of getting infected. Over in India, they've now passed 5 million confirmed cases and 80,000 deaths. However, 3.94 million people have recovered. In the UK, lawmakers have slammed the government's COVID-19 response, saying the country may not be ready for the colder months where infections are expected to soar. But in some good news, late night dining is back on the menu in South Korea after Seoul saw its lowest daily number of new coronavirus cases in a month. A new book has detailed the startling revelation that the US and North Korea may have actually come closer to war than anyone ever thought in the early days of the Trump administration. Veteran political journalist Bob Woodward, who you may remember for his reporting on the Watergate scandal, detailed the evolution of the Trump-Kim relationship in his new book, Rage. It comes as North Korea and Kim Jong-un's leadership faces a new challenge, rebuilding and harvesting the country's crops before winter hits after typhoons and flooding hit the country. And we're going to take a quick break now. Coming up next on 6 News, we'll have the latest in entertainment as Saturday Night Live announces they've got a new Joe Biden. And in sport, two Hawthorne Premiership stars announce they are hanging up the boots. Stay with us. has been one of the biggest years in our lifetime. Calls for police reform across the country, a global pandemic that has changed the way we live, and the upcoming election that will shape America. As the U.S. gets ready to decide who will lead the country for the next four years, we'll keep you informed with all the latest developments in the race for the presidency. Special coverage and expert analysis only on 6 News. That story went round on late Saturday afternoon. It was broken on that website, Six News. <laughs> He's only 12 years old, but already Leonardo Puglisi fronts his own news channel. That is incredible. Absolutely inspiring. Leo's fantastic. He's doing an amazing job. He's, he's everywhere. He's breaking stories. That's pretty impressive, Leo. We love Leo. For now. We do, we do, we do. I might see him doing a bit more stuff on camera before too long. Very good at what you do, young man. What an amazing guy. This is your studio here. It's a pretty sweet setup you've got. We're following your story. Uh, we're rooting for you. He will be the next Carl Stefanovic. There's no doubt about that. Yeah. Lovely to see you. And go hard.
Welcome back. We'll get to entertainment in just a moment. But first, a recap of our top story in regional Victoria has taken a massive step out of lockdown, returning to stage two restrictions after several days of low coronavirus numbers. Victoria Police and the military have now increased border checkpoint control with the Premier warning that fines will be issued if people are caught sneaking across. As part of the easing of restrictions, those in regional Victoria will be allowed to return to in-person learning. But in Melbourne, it's expected that nearly all students will keep learning online for the rest of the year. The state's former police chief commissioner, Graham Ashton, has also questioned why the Australian Federal Police were not used to guard return travellers in hotel quarantine as the inquiry continues. US variety series Saturday Night Live have announced that actor Jim Carrey will be playing Democratic nominee and former Vice President Joe Biden on the new season of the show. SNL will return just in time to mock the upcoming election when it returns in the US on October 3rd. The series will premiere with five consecutive episodes leading up to the election on November 3. Carrey has been called a surprising choice by some to play Biden, considering that he is not a part of the cast. And for our Australian views, you can watch SNL clips on their official YouTube channel. Joe Hildebrand has announced that he will be joining Sydney radio station 2GB after leaving Studio 10 earlier this month. Hildebrand announced that he will be leaving Network 10's morning show as part of a restructure at the network partly forced on by the coronavirus pandemic. Hildebrand originally said that he was considering his option after 10 announced that it would be making cuts to its Studio 10 team including co-host Kerry ann Kennelly and newsreader Natasha Belling. However, he later said that he would be leaving the network. Hildebrand will join John Stanley in the night slot every Thursday but will only be on the show for an hour now. However, he did tell the Daily Telegraph that he was hoping the role would expand. To sport now and two Hawthorne Premiership stars have announced that they'll be retiring from the AFL. Ben Stratton and Paul Pioppolo will be hanging up the boots, coming at the same time as veteran Sean Burgoyne signs on with the Hawks. Senior reporter Darby Travers has more. Emotions were running high today as the Hawthorne Football Club farewelled two of its legends. Ben Stratton and Paul Pioppolo have been with the club for 10 years. They've shared three premierships and hundreds of games between them. For me, once I started thinking about it, it's kind of a bit of a sign that um, it was probably time. When I first got to the club, just try to earn the respect of the boys and hopefully that respect stayed um, until this day. The Hawthorne skipper and star forward decided to hang up the boots just days after veteran Sean Burgoyne announced he would play on for another season next year. A big play of the upload. He climbed over the top, the 360, and that is a nomination for sure. Hawthorne coach Alastair Clarkson paid tribute to the pair, saying, As a coach, they are both players you love to have in your side. They never give up and they will put everything on the line for their teammates and club. Derby Travers, 6 News. Alright, let's check in with tomorrow's forecast right around the nation. Brisbane, partly cloudy, 26 degrees. Sydney, 27. Canberra, heavy rain, 22. Melbourne, 18. Adelaide, 19. Perth, 17. Darwin, 32. Townsville, 29. Wollongong, 27. Ballarat, 15. Bendigo, 17. And in Hobart, light rain, 13 degrees. And that is Six News for this Sunday evening. You can start today with all the latest news on our social pages at Six News AU. Don't forget, next week our news may look a little different, and it's certainly going to sound a lot different. I'm Leonardo Pagalesi. Thanks for your company. Good night.